the Minnesota Golden Gophers and P.J. Flex Bunch last year. A uh, little, I, I would say, overachieved other than the fact that post-game win expectancy said that they were right where they should have been. They were 9-3, uh, and three, or excuse me, 8-4 and four in the regular season. Uh, post-game win expectancy said they should have been 9.11 and 2.89. So 9-3, and a uh, little surprising. They are number 44 in returning production, 67% coming back, most of that coming back on offense. The defense, only 60% coming back. That's number 79 in the country. Roster strength, uh, they're okay. It's just that the offense is uh, its a little heavily tilted that direction. Defense number 78 in roster strength, thanks to the guys over at CFB Winning Edge for that. This team did not run a lot of plays last year, and P.J. Fleck flat out said in the spring that last year was a failure on him as a coach. And, you know, I, I guess I can understand it. I, if he's got a different set of expectations, I guess I can understand that. The offense was not great. Number 77 in PPA per drive, uh, number 79 rushing success rate, number 85 passing. They were number 114 in explosive play rate. Just not awesome. But they did a good job of not turning the football over, and they didn't beat themselves with penalties. So that's certainly good. The new OC, of course, we'll talk about the offense first. The new OC, Kurt Soraka, uh, was at Penn State for one year. He was the leader of that huge 2019 season where, you know, they had great wide receivers. Uh, somehow Tanner Morgan was the quarterback and is still the quarterback. Uh, it just continues on. But uh, but Sanford Jr. Uh, was fired as the offensive coordinator due to a just a lack of a passing game. They were number 118 in passing yards per game, number 127 in attempts per game. And the only three schools that had less passing attempts per game than they did were the service academies. I mean, it's kind of insane when you look at it. Uh, the Encore Four are all back for their sixth season, and that's Tanner Morgan, Mo Ibrahim, the center John Michael Schmitz, and the wide receiver Chris Altman-Bell. Uh, this this team, they do lose some offensive line help, so that is certainly going to hurt. Uh, but the center, Schmitz, is back, so that is that's a key piece that you would like, especially when you've got a quarterback coming back. Michigan transfer left guard Chuck Felasia, Felega. I'm, I'm not sure how to say it. T tell me in the comments. Tell me uh, how you pronounce this name. Um, he's in the remaining offensive line talent. Should help the running backs be more successful than they were last year? I mean, it really, for as good as, for as much as they ran, they were not really great at it. They weren't successful at it, and yet they found a way to win nine ball games last year. Uh, as far as the defense, Joe Rosie, Rossi, however you say it, had a disastrous 2020, but was uh, top 10 in points per game and total yards per game in 2021. So that is definitely good. Uh, six of the top eight defensive linemen, as far as snap count, are gone. And they also lost their leading tackler, which is uh, the linebacker, Jack Gibbons. And, of course, they lost uh, the cornerback, uh, Durr, there, Coney Durr. Linebackers should be okay with Sori Marin and Oliver. Secondary has got talent. They got two safeties that played 650 snaps last year. Uh, two transfer cornerbacks that could be really good. You got Stapp from Abilene, uh, Abilene Christian and Bishop from Western Kentucky. Uh, this team is a projected favorite in eight games this year. Their total uh, is set at seven and a half, and it's uh, juiced a little bit to the under. I was a little surprised by that. Uh, they are plus 550 to win the division. The fact that Iowa actually has shorter odds than they do. That's uh, a bit surprising to me. Uh, if you look at the keys to the season here, they were plus six turnovers and wins, minus three in their losses. So there wasn't like a huge discrepancy, but you could certainly you could certainly tell when they didn't turn the ball over and when they did, there was a big difference in, in winning ball games. Field position for this team last year was massive. Number six on offense, number one on defense. Uh, but I don't, I can't figure out how they got there Right? I don't think it was turnovers and all that. It kickoff returns, they were number 119 in the country on actual return yardage. Uh, punt returns, number 60, and they were number 82 in takeaways. So I'm not sure exactly how the numbers got there, but, but they started in great field position on both defense and on offense. They allowed 26 touchdowns in 47 quality possessions last year. That, I mean, that's not great. Like the 47 quality possessions, that's pretty good. Uh, the 26 touchdowns is not. They, uh, they ranked 105th, allowing 4.02 points per quality possessions. Uh, the defense, as good as they were, they need to figure out a way to get stops this year. Uh, they need the offensive line and defensive line to hold up. 
I mean, the biggest key to the season is the offense coordinator, Kirk Soraka, and, and Tanner Morgan. Can they click again? Can they recreate that 2019 magic that they had? Uh, if they got wide res- like if they have wide receivers that can develop into studs like Bateman was, then you could have a monster season this year. Uh, PJ Fleck, for all the stuff that goes on outside, there are of course former players that want to talk about him and everything that want to talk bad about him. Uh, I mean, he's been a pretty successful head coach. Like he has figured out this division pretty quickly. Uh, they've beaten Wisconsin twice. Like I'm. I'm a little shocked at that. I don't expect them to be able to go into Madison this year and get that win. Uh, but I've got this team at 8-4. and four. Like I think it's as goofy as that culture may be uh, for those that are on the outside like myself. Uh, the people that are inside of it firmly believe in it, and I guess I can get with that. I, I understand what they are trying to build there, and it looks like it's working. Uh, the schedule looks a little bit tough at Michigan State, at Illinois, at Penn State, at Nebraska, at Wisconsin. Kind of tough, kind of tough. I don't imagine that this is a team that will uh, that'll win the West this year, but uh, crazier things have happened, certainly. So I've, I've got them at eight and four. I've got them going over that seven and a half. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. It, it's tough with those road games, but you know the first three games set up brilliantly. Would it surprise me if they beat Michigan State? No. Um, you got Purdue at home right after that. Then after your bye week, you got at Illinois at Pitts. Like it, the schedule is is okay. There's nobody on this schedule that's that's not beatable, so I I guess anything could happen here. But I'm I've got them going eight and four, uh, again projected favorites in eight games. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at GaryWCE at Chris B G and any at Winning Cures, or you can email us Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.